on Which this. Is how po- I say good morning. No, oh, no, well, well, I was sorry. Gonna, was it? I was going to say on this podcast, Paul, we believe in uh, X and Y axes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Think about I, it. I assume you're referring to the Apple presentation. I am. But there we go. Which, Look, we had X and Y axes. Um, didn't necessarily make a ton of sense. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So what? What a day yesterday. What a day. <laughs> yep. There Remember was. Remember uh, how we've been waiting since June for some clarification. Remember? Oh, right. We're still waiting. We don't yeah, have to remember. We still are. Um, let me let me lay out this timeline mm-hmm. of perfect series of events and change the topic. It's great. So we had a virtual conference yesterday. It went pretty well. And um, as as you know, I was complaining about FedEx yesterday morning. As you mm-hmm. you know, par for the course. Um, I got to give you credit, FedEx. They did a good job. Good job, FedEx. Okay. So, um, anyway, so the virtual conference went right up until like I turned everything off at like three o five. Okay, I'm literally walking to my kitchen to get a drink of water, and FedEx is driving in, pulling into my driveway. Like, just there could not have been a more right. perfect moment. So you must have been stressing a little bit yesterday because FedEx could show up at any time. Now, look, the way the mm-hmm. pandemic's gone. They basically slow the truck down, throw the box out, and keep going, and uh, will mark it down as you having signed for something. But, but that's that's a problem too, right? You don't yeah. want a box sitting out there, et cetera. So that's yeah. good. That's yeah. good time. They, they did a good job. Well, mm-hmm. it, it kept saying before eight p.m. and because I stare at FedEx too much, it kind of like usually the, Microsoft has a deal with like their logistics company, and one of them is in Louisville, Kentucky, which is usually mm-hmm. great for me because that's like ninety minutes same. from here. Yep, same here. Yep. Um, but usually it goes from Louisville to Cincinnati and it went to Indianapolis. And I was like, uh-oh, mm-hmm. like that's unusual. But anyways, yeah. it made it here on time. And okay. um, and by the way, I assume you're blown away. It's so different. And um... yeah, it, it's, um, I, I will say though, I you can definitely <laughs> so. tell a difference in war zone. Um, like across the board, it's completely faster. Like literally yeah. oh, every, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything yeah. about it. Um, but you've not noticed a difference like graphically, right? I mean, the only, the only it is a little smoother. I mm-hmm. definitely can tell like things load and render faster, like in the game. Um, Ori has some good updates to it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which that I did play because my TV supports everything. Like that's the reason why I bought it. So it does 120 frames mm-hmm. per second. It does 120 re hertz or hertz refresh rate. Um, it like it screams at you if you don't. I initially did not. I didn't think about it. I didn't even use the HDMI cable that was in the box. Oh, you should have because that's the two point one version. Well, I I learned this because I plugged it in yeah. and then it's screaming at me like saying, "Hey, your uh, cable is not compliant." And and it literally says on the TV or like on the error message, "Use the cable that's in the box." <laughs> oh, that's like, funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, right, 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 right. But you know, I mean, the thing it's ugly as hell. Am I? entertainment center. Well, it's, I think it's I mean it's not um it's decidedly masculine I mean well, um it here's the worst part like I can't yeah. mine's not upright it's on its side yeah okay. so what I might try to do is somebody recommend it like <laughs> this we're gonna we're gonna have a little lesson here in marriage compromise so I could I could we'll describe it. where this is because what kind of a setup do you have with regards, like, I can probably cap, poorly because yeah. I didn't plan this out so this I have an actual image on my phone somewhere of it okay so, oh no, those are the things that my the chips I bought yesterday. Uh, so let's see here. So you, if you're looking real close, you can kind of see it here. Like yes, comp- okay, it's below your soundbar. Yes, and so you see this above plants. a is that a real plant or one of no, those decorative? It's, things? No, no, it's yeah. a fake okay. plant. Um, so those shelves, mm-hmm. like many shelves in entertainment cabinets, can be moved. So I could take that out and turn it vertically. And make it yeah, but how much space would be above it? Because obviously there would, it's there would be enough. Air. But the the bigger issue is that my my wife likes that plant there, and so I'm just not going to screw with it. <laughs> I mean, the plant could stand next to it. Right? <laughs> no, it, it 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 looks even worse. Like I, okay. I I screwed with this. But what I might be able to do, and this is what I don't know, is turn it so that the the exhaust port yeah, on the top the green is front. Yeah. That now the challenge there is then the cables have to come out the top because of the the location of them, right? I don't want them on the side because I don't want to see them, like staring. Well, in. you got to be careful with that because if you look at the back of it, if it, if it were standing up straight, and you're looking at the back, there's a slot at the very top, and it appears to be a vent. Mm-hmm. Um, so you want to make sure that's well, actually, that would be facing up because you're talking about the cables. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't we'll know. They're all in the back. I mean, you could leave it on the side. The cables are would come out of the side, but they all be the far back of it. I mean, yeah, we'll see. Um, but whatever. I mean, it works. It was great. Everything is what it is. We just need maybe a game. Have that... you you pre-ordered uh, Cold War, the new? Um... I haven't pre-ordered. I mean, I'm going to buy it because that's 120 frames per second game or whatever. Yeah, because that's that's what I'm really curious to see. When, does that come out tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow. T- yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but if you buy it now, you can pre-install it. Ah. So maybe so I will. Give it a size. I will it's tell like you. 76 gig. And so what, what I don't know, and I, I don't know enough about the specs on either console, is mm-hmm. that console over there downloads stuff way faster, way faster right. than this one did. This one would top out at about 40, well, about 40, yeah. me- no, not even 40. Like, Are you doing this over Ethernet or? Hardwired. Uh, yeah, so um, I don't. I, I'm not trying to be a jerk about this. I don't think this is an inherent capability of the console. I think yeah. it's Microsoft. I, I think they are doing that to help pre- with the perceived uh, performance, which I don't mind. But I've mm-hmm. always it's always bothered me how crappy previous X Gen consoles would download things. Yeah. Um, there's. I, no, I mean, I don't remember exactly what chipsets in there. Look, this thing doesn't even have Wi-Fi six, dude. It's probably the same. It probably is. Like it's probably, probably just the same basic Wi-Fi. You yeah. Know? But for whatever reason, I, the speeds I was getting yesterday downloading were about twice that of yeah. what the One X was. Now, you could be exactly right that they just kind of lifted that cap or whatever on their on their CDN and said, look, for the next couple of months, we're just going to go faster while people get up to speed. Or oh my whatever. God, yeah. It's like, it's a pandemic. It's the holiday season. Let's just unleash the hounds, you know? Yeah. I, I've seen a little bit of both. My um, Xbox One X is on a wire and it's fast. The Xbox One S, I, at some point I decided to, oh, was, I told you the story over the weekend because I thought something was wrong with the other console. I was installing uh, probably Black Ops 4. That freaking thing took all day and it was over Wi-Fi. It was downloading at like somewhere between 20 and 40, you know, megabits per second. It was like seriously or whatever gigabits per second. It was like so freaking slow. Um, it took all day. It took all day because that game is, you know, with all the add-ons, aside, it's like 150 gigabytes. Stupid. Yeah, yeah. All the people I play Warzone with who didn't buy one are laughing like, "Yeah, you're not gonna be playing tonight." And it it, <laughs> it installed Warzone in about an hour, which yeah. is how that's big is hundred gigs by itself? Hundred gigs, yeah. Something somewhere around that for all the crap you got yep. to download. So cool. Yeah. Anything else? What else? Anything else? Uh... No, I mean it's just whatever. Oh, here's a really really annoying thing, and I got to figure this one out. So Microsoft's brilliance: the dashboard is 1080p, right? Yeah. And non HDR. And non HDR and all that. Here's what's really annoying. So I'm playing my non HDR game or dashboard and you jump into any game. Mm-hmm. Well, modern TVs, you know, they gotta like turn that crap on and like adjust. And so you get all these notifications. It's like instant response launched, HDR launch, four K yeah, launch, yeah. hundred twenty frames, hundred twenty hertz off launch. Your TV, but um, on the display I use, uh, which is a gaming display, but it's only sixty hertz, uh, there mm-hmm. is just a it, it, there's a small notification in the corner that will say HDR on or HDR off. And yeah. so I notice it. I know that the dashboard's not HDR. And by the way, it looks dull. Like it's, mm-hmm. it, it's flat looking and you go into a game and it's like, boing, you know, yeah. and it's like, why, why wouldn't you just make the dashboard HDR? You know? Yeah. I, I was playing Ori last night, which it's a game I've already completed front to back, but it's just like, yeah. it's like a little beacon of HDR light Mm -hmm. like that's the little like it's especially on an oled tv where it's all dark like it's really pretty like it's really really well done but yeah but again that's not a new game though so um, that game's gonna look great you know Mm -hmm. other things that don't look great um are well i shouldn't say don't look great that's maybe a little too pessimistic (laughs) things that are still opaque uh are things that start with the letter m because and and with and with the number one I was waiting for Microsoft to come out and be like, yeah, but we got SQ 1.5. We've got a better chip because it's a higher number. Whatever that thing, yeah. Probably not a better chip. They, they uh, probably shouldn't, but... Yeah. Um, a lot of questions there. Yeah. Uh, this is one of those things where, like, the, the, the light kind of dawns as it moves on, and you're like, they're not going to tell us mm-hmm. what we need to know. And they are subtly, uh, you know, suggesting things by what they say and don't say, right? Um, the M1 is only used in low-end Macs, which I think is telling. 
the, the it only supports up to 16 gigs of RAM. Which uh, that right the, there is weird that they they put that thing in a MacBook Pro. But, well, I can explain that. So this is the thing. Like if you're not if you're not like you got to understand, I have sat on the Apple order page and configured Macs, you know, for hours and hours and hours. So the one thing I'm sort of intimately familiar with is that the MacBook Air has come in one configuration, basically the past couple of gens. It's a Y series chip. It's the same, you know, basically everything's the same. You can, 16 gigs of RAM, whatever. MacBook Pro is kind of curious because the past uh, couple of gens, several gens now, I guess, um, since they moved to Thunderbolt, there's there's a single low end configuration that is lower end. It was lower end Iris graphics, which are integrated, uh, two uh, USB C Thunderbolt three ports on the left side only, no, no ports on the right. And then if you move up from there, all of the rest of the configurations are four ports, two on each side. So the the M1 based MacBook Pro replaces that single low end configuration. That's all mm-hmm. it is. It's not. So they still sell the upper versions in Intel, just like they do on the Mac Mini, because these things can be configured with at least 32 gigs of RAM, possibly 64. I don't remember the exact number they crap out, but probably 32 in the MacBook Pro. Um, so they still have both. I mean, I, this is interesting because people have gone back and forth over the past several months about which Macs would come first and everything. And at one point, there was a rumor it was going to be like the return to the low-end MacBook with a butterfly keyboard. And the feeling was... like. If that's the first thing they release, this thing is only capable of handling the workloads of a low-end Mac. But what they did release, even though it wasn't that, is literally what I just said. It's these are the low-end Macs, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, the other little detail here that they didn't uh, really talk about, uh, you had to kind of look at the charts to see it, I think. Um, the MacBook Air, now we get into a weird situation where the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, the M1-based versions, are the same hardware. Yeah. So why would you, you know, why why yeah. would you go to the? Well, the reason is they've actually detuned the M1 and the MacBook Air a little bit. It has a f- fewer GPU uh, GPU cores. Um, it doesn't mm. have active cooling, so I feel like they're probably clocking it a little bit down. I don't yeah. really actually know that. Well, it's probably just. It's honestly probably just an iPad Air or whatever, in a laptop. Yeah. So I, here's the. Th- it's interesting. Like. They went to the M1 name, which I sort of get. I, I, if they were being a little more honest, they might have called it like an M14 so they could track it with whatever the other chips were. Mm-hmm. But now I'm sort of wondering if we're not going to see something like generations of these chips where uh, Apple might have like an M1, an M2, an M3, so sort of like BMWs. And there might be like a second generation M1 next year that will still power these low-end chips, but the M2 or M3, whatever naming they use might be used for like higher end uh, products to kind of indicate things that support um, external graphics or dedicated graphics, which by the way, neither of these computers do more than one external screen, which by the way, neither of these computers or none of these computers do. Um, it's just a lot of uh, missing information, you know, and, and seriously, they compare performance to, in, to these nebulous things that mean nothing. The best selling windows PC in its class, whatever that is, they, what they never did do was say, okay, look, here's Microsoft Office. It's a legacy app. It's x86. Here's how it runs under emulation. It looks mm-hmm. great. It's fine or whatever. Now, here's like a native version of Microsoft Office, and it works even better. They never did anything specific like that. And I think that's what matters. You know, you can talk benchmarks all you want. I made my commentary about benchmarks yesterday. Um, they don't mean anything. And what means something is real-world compatibility and real world performance. And this is where Windows 10 on ARM has fallen short, and this is where we need to know what Apple's really doing with the M1. Yep. So. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something and it's gonna hurt, but you know it's gonna be true. <laughs> Ready? And I say in like 24, 36 months, there's gonna be an iPad Pro event and they're gonna switch from like an A16 and they're gonna make, look, we're gonna put desktop class performance in here and they're gonna call like an M3. Yeah, actually, I think that makes sense because right now the iPad Pro does not differentiate very well versus the lower end iPads, especially the Air. And actually, if anything, if I'm, I'm not an expert in the iPad, but I think the iPad Air actually has a superior chipset right now it than might. the iPad, yeah. which is kind of screwed up, you know? Yeah, no, that makes sense. They're going to do it. You just, you know, they are. Um, the other thing, too, which I don't believe we didn't see Adobe on the stage, right? I, 
I was. We didn't see them on the stage, but they specifically called out. It. By the way, when they they talked a little bit about software, and they had a goofy video with developers, all of whom were these companies no one's ever heard of. Hold on, hold on. I want to interrupt you right there. They did have one. They had one. They had the people who made Affinity Photo. Okay, fair. And, okay. and so, no, I was sitting there. I was, he was like, "Those are my people." Like, I. <laughs> <laughs> so I do use it. All right. So I, we both use Affinity Photo. Um, the they said that Lightroom would be available next month, I think. And then uh, Photoshop next year. Um, you know, what they didn't say was, but that's okay because Photoshop will still work great <laughs> when you buy yeah. this Mac. They didn't say that. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't, I don't know what they do. I don't know what's going on here. I, I, I it is so dishonest. So the question for this is, company well, to do this now, I, it makes no sense. Did you buy They're one? Hiding. Did you buy one? No. I didn't. I didn't know if you would or not. Um, I'm interested. I'm less interested because they were so nonspecific. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. I have to assume that right now, the reviewers either have or will soon be getting these devices, and that by the time this thing ships, the the, the products are shipping. What next Thursday? I think so. You can order them today, I believe. Yeah, but they they come out next week. So before that, before customers get them, sometime between now and then, there will be reviews on all the major sites that you know get these Apple review products. And those people will t test the software they already use and will know. Mm -hmm. How that works will determine what I do going forward. I have to say buying a first-gen product from any company, but not especially Apple. But in this case, yeah. because it's a, it's just a transition. Um, well, here's the way to think of it. Uh, people kind of forget this, and I, maybe I'll even get this a little bit wrong. But when Apple did the, their transition uh, to Intel, I believe the first product they released was a an Intel based MacBook, which at that time was the white polycarbonate body. Mm -hmm. and eventually, they had a black version, but it was white. Um, that chip that they used was a think about this, this is a little weird. Before we had these Core i3, i5, i7s, we had Core Duo, right? Yeah. Before that, we had something called Core Solo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's single single yep. core. That's what that was. So when you think about the the evolution of Intel chipsets, the least desirable <laughs> of all is that first one, the Core Solo. Nobody wants this thing anyway. That's it wouldn't be viable anymore. Obviously, um, that's what this M1 is. The M1 is the Core Solo of the Apple Silicon world for Mac. So I don't know. Well, well, uh, let me next week I'll be all excited about it if everything works out. But right now I'm like, eh, I don't like the way they did this. Yep. The pricing didn't look too bad. I think it starts at six ninety nine. But I mean, that's not that's the not price cheap. The but, same or less, right? That, yeah, I, think, I thought it was a little less. Well, nine ninety nine is MacBook Air. That's where MacBook Air is. Um, was it the Mac Mini that wasn't? Hold on, let me. Mac Mini, I think, was a hundred bucks less. I think Mac Mini used to be seven ninety nine, and now it's six ninety nine. And then the MacBook Pro is twelve ninety nine, which is what it was. So they kept the pricing on the portables and dropped the price somehow. I, I've always felt. The MacBook, uh, the Mac uh, Mini mm -hmm. was priced, but yeah. So the it's hundred bucks. I mean, I guess that would be one way to test it. You know, if you need yeah. to develop box because uh, you're going to target iOS and you just need to compile on Xcode or whatever. You know, using a Xam you know, I'm not saying well, you're Xamarin mm -hmm. or using um, you know, Flutter or whatever. But you still, you know, you need a Mac to get it into the store. It'd be a cheap way to do it. You know, cheap is relative, but compared to like the Mac Pros, okay. which or oh, you're, what, develop, you're you're putting an app in a store, seven hundred bucks. I mean, yeah, I guess that's that's a fair point. Curious how long it takes the Mac Pro to transition, considering it took seventeen years for them to build that thing. Uh, I'm assuming that. Well, this is the thing. Like I said, you know, um, they need first of all more cores, possibly multiple chips. They're going to need more RAM. They're going to yeah. need dedicated and external GPU support. Uh, support for multiple displays above one external display. Um, there's lots of stuff. So it's not like, okay, we shipped M1. Let's start working on this other stuff. They've been working on it, right? I mean, yeah, it's oh, yeah for sure. Um, I'm surprised they didn't. I don't know. They were very vague. You mm -hmm. know, I, I think there were any, any, at any point where saying something would have made the current product look bad, they just ignored it. You know? Yeah, that is true. Because they don't want to stop selling them. I mean, they, they need to keep selling the Mac Pros. I'm sure that those things are pretty high margin for them. Yeah. 
there was something the other thing too and i don't because i don't review a lot of apple like laptops so we know in the microsoft world when they say 20 hours of battery life really what you do is you divide that by two and then like add one or two hours and that's about real world performance i'll be curious to see what the new macs are apple has typically relied on more real world numbers for battery life i would Mm -hmm. say in the past However, they did a bit of shenanigans with that. Um, the first product they showed off was the MacBook Air, and they talked about 20 hours of video playback. Video playback is the red herring of the battery life world. Everyone knows that's nonsense. That doesn't right. mean anything. Yeah, because we're all on the back of planes for never. Anyway. Yeah, so I thought that was – I heard that, and I was like, uh, here we go. So to put that in perspective, most uh, Windows 10 on ARM-based P- uh, PCs typically will advertise 20 to 22 hours of battery life. The Surface – Pro X, they talk 15, right? Mm-hmm. So like you said, real world numbers in that are probably closer to eight, nine maybe if you're lucky, which by the way, is still great. It's awesome yeah. battery life. Um, the second uh, portable machine that Apple talked about was the MacBook Pro. Mm-hmm. And that time they said uh, even more uh, on video playback. But then they said, uh, I, I can't remember, maybe you remember, I think it was 15 hours of web I can't, I can't remember how they said it. Web browsing or whatever? Probably like an automated web browsing test. Mm-hmm. That's probably closer to real world. So maybe, I, 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 I'm just speculating here. I mean, maybe what we're really talking about is somewhere in the 10 to 12 hour range. 13, somewhere in there. I don't know. I, I, there's no way to know. Plus, like I said yesterday, battery life is going to vary dramatically depending on what you run. If you run a yep. bunch of native apps, it's probably going to be pretty good. But if you run a bunch of emulated x86 apps, it's probably going to be pretty crappy. Um, I don't know. We don't know because they didn't say. They gave bullshit numbers. Jerks. Call me Tim. <laughs>